Hey guys, who wants to take a wild guess? Which box? Oh, from here they look the same size. Anyways, the top box is the smallest. But who wants to guess which box has one eyebrow pencil and which box has six items? The smaller box obviously has six items, but why do they need that big of a box for an eyebrow pencil? Let's start with the small box because it has stuff that I want to try right now and put these big boxes with one eyebrow pencil in there. And I already opened the small box because of the skincare products. So let's start with the skincare products before I go on to the makeup. So first I got this Super Goop Daily Dose Bioretinol Plus Mineral SPF. So I don't know if y'all are married to men or have boyfriends, but I'm sure a majority of us have the same experience with them not taking care of their skin. For a while now, my husband has been complaining about his wrinkles. And I'm like, okay, well, you can use retinol at night. And he's like, sure, let's do that. And I'm like, I wouldn't suggest that though because you're horrible at putting sunscreen. You never remember to put sunscreen in the morning. You're just gonna make it worse if you use the retinol. It's been a year, almost two years, and his wrinkles are starting to make him feel bad. Now he's finally taking it seriously. Anyways, I got this Super Goop Daily Dose as a sample in the Sephora order. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like this is made for you because it has retinol, bio-retinol, and it's an SPF. He tried the sample, he loved it, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get you the big bottle. This is like $48, again, 20% off with the sale. It's so funny how his skincare stuff that I buy for him is way more expensive than mine, but with him, he's not allergic to anything like my skin is, so I can kind of go crazy with his skincare. I was like, do you like it? Like the reviews on Sephora, like a lot of people don't like it. They say it looks oily. And he was like, no, I really like it. And I was like, okay, perfect. So maybe if you have a lover who is complaining about wrinkles, but is horrible with sunscreen, maybe let them try this. I feel like I can finally relax after trying to find him something that he'll use. Okay, and for my only skincare that I got was the Pharmacy Brighten Up Dark Spot Toner. I got this in my last Sephora haul. What was that, like six months, eight months? And I finally used it up. I did say if this did work and help lighten up my spots, I, I would write it down in the description. It didn't. Nothing has really lightened up my dark spots. Basically everything from my toner to my serums to my sunscreen. My goal with my skincare is always my dark spots. Yet like, I feel like nothing helps. Nothing much to say about her. She's just a toner I use. Yeah. And the last four in this box is another Tower 20 Lip Softy, the Cali Ray Concealer, a Give Blush, and a Rare Beauty Brow Gel. So let us go in with the Tower 28 first, just to hydrate my lips because they are pretty dry. I got it in Ube Vanilla multiple times now. I've talked about how much I love this. And I have been reading reviews and you know, people saying like, oh, it easily evaporates. Oh, it's not working, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like that friend, you know, when you tell your friend, hey, try out this new restaurant. Hey, try out this new skincare product, makeup product. And then they're like, you know, it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. And then your first thought is like, no girl, you're probably using it wrong. You're not using it the right way. No, I swear you'll like it, just use it more. That, that's how I felt when I was reading the reviews. Cause like I said, people were saying that it dries out fast. Yes, I can see that or it doesn't work. But one, I didn't notice. We just got back from Vegas and is very dry. And I was like, is she not working anymore? Because it was pretty hard for my lips to go back to normal. I Googled and Nevada is the driest state in the US. Dude, I get zapped every time I'm there. Like everything I touch, I get zapped and it hurts. Oh my gosh, you can hear the electricity when I touch something, like when I touch an elevator button. Uh, this doesn't really smell like ube. It smells more like vanilla, Ah, I kind of wish there was more ube. Anyway, so my point was, I was like, is this not working anymore? Is it not working because I'm in Nevada? But I noticed what was happening was like what I do with my deodorant. When I find something that works, I notice I slowly use less and less of it. I'm like, oh, I don't need that much anymore. But I noticed since I haven't been using a big amount, it hasn't been working. So I kind of want to tell those people who are saying like, oh, it doesn't work. I want to tell them like, you're probably not putting on a decent amount. So that's my one theory. Cause that kind of happened with my deodorant. I love my deodorant, the Kosas one. And then suddenly I'm like, why am I smelling again? It's not working. And then I noticed it's just because I was using less. That's what was happening with this. So my theory is maybe you're not putting in enough to you're probably smacking your lips together a lot and that's why it's drying out. I do that all the time. That's why I feel like it's best to use this at night or before you go to sleep because if I use this before I go to sleep, my lips are so nice and moisturized in the morning. This always heals my lips. 
it's always when I'm not paying attention. Also, I don't put a lot on because I feel like I'm always drinking water or having little snacks so like it's a waste when I put this on because it goes away really fast. My advice if you feel like this isn't working maybe try it on before you go to sleep so it stays on your lips. Put enough. She's still my favorite. I'm not sure if I like this scent more than my Dulce de Leche. I wish this smelled more like Ube than vanilla. So I got the Urban Decay face bond also in the Sephora haul but this I bought in store so I already used her in my last video in my first impressions. I did not like her. I'm gonna try her again. So in my last video I used the Power Grip primer from e.l.f. and my hourglass brush and since she's a very thick full coverage foundation I'll use a beauty blender today and I'll use my Smashbox photo finish. This is the silicone primer. I feel like the silicone primers really get into my pores. She doesn't really get into my pores as much as the silicone primer does and this foundation oh my gosh you could see it really accentuated my pores. She's a very thick foundation and I want to see if using a beauty blender to soften her up and using a really good pore filling primer to see if it'll make her work this time. Because if not, um, yeah, I'm gonna return her. But I have a feeling the foundation's still gonna accentuate all those pores. So I'm in the shade 13. The one good thing is she is also almost an exact shade. Like every time I try on a foundation and compare it to my neck, it's always slightly off, but she practically matched my neck. Let me put on like a very tiny amount. When I was putting this on, on camera and looking in the mirror. It actually looked pretty decent. It didn't look that cakey but then once I went and looked in my bathroom mirror oh my gosh I was like what the f that is really cakey. There is no pretending like you're not wearing foundation. It is not natural. When you go outside wearing this people will be like oh girl you're wearing foundation. You cannot hide it. Okay one it is looking a little better on my pores. Let me go to the bathroom and see if it's just the lights making this look good again. But now that it's softer, now it's not covering up my dark spots or a lot of my redness now. What I'm getting is if you do not want to look like a cakey ghost, then use a sponge and use a nice silicone primer or a primer that you know really gets in your pores. Okay so she did look slightly better again. I really think that's because of the primer but I see the same thing that happened in my last video where I was seeing these weird cracks. Also I've never seen pores right here. Like I only see big open pores right here but I'm seeing pores over here. No joke. Um, so this foundation is just showing me every little pore I have even though the Smashbox fills them in better than the e.l.f. one. Yeah, this is still gonna be a no for me. This is way too thick. It's gonna look too dry on dry skin folks and I feel like it's just gonna look too cakey and heavy on oily skin folks. So second impressions with using a different primer using a different blending tool. I still don't like it. Okay, next let's use the Cali Ray Hideaway Brightening Under Eye Color Corrector. I got the shade Golden Hour. I also got the Say Concealer in the Sephora haul. I used it in my last video. I did really like her. I want to see if I like her just as much as the Say one. So I'm going to be using my same BK A506 just so I can use both these concealers in the same way. You can see how much more yellow Golden Hour is. She looks very orange here in the mirror but on the camera I feel like she looks like a normal concealer shade. She's a little thicker than say oof and already going on. I can already see her heavily getting in those cracks. If you watched my last video I talked a lot about cracks <laughs> or these wrinkles on the under eyes and I was saying that I was so shocked how the say concealer wasn't accentuating them as crazy as other concealers do. So with this one Already I feel like I can see it sitting on top of my under eye. I don't see it blending into my skin. Over here it is blending into my skin but on my dry under eyes I can kind of see it just sitting there. And also it looks very... immediately what came to my mind was a dinosaur. <laughs> I can see little dry bumps. It looks like scales. Okay so immediately with this first impression I do not like it. I apologize because you're gonna see all my pores and dark spots but I feel like I really want to show you what's happening. But can you see all these little like patches of the concealer? It looks like it's giving me some dinosaur skin or snake skin. I've never seen that in a concealer. If I've seen that in any of my concealers 
I would have been like, what the F is that? And right now I'm like, what the F is that? <laughs> I'm kind of not understanding what's going on. I know I'm sounding a little dramatic right now, but I'm just shocked because I have never seen that. Why did I want to say phenomenon? I have never seen that phenomenon. 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 Maybe let's put... Actually, no, I can't put a tiny bit. You can still see the outline of my dark circle again. Concealers are hard at covering these outlines of my dark circles. But if this looks dry on my skin, and I have very oily skin, then I know it's gonna look drier on my dry skin folks. And I also cannot blame the foundation because I made sure to not get foundation in my circles. And I used the same foundation in my last video with the Say Concealer. And I did not have this problem with the Say Concealer. I fell in love with the Say Concealer. Very moisturizing, very hydrating. It did cover my dark circles. It covered it better than the Tower 28 Hydrating Concealer. The Tower 28 one that everyone loves, I swear, the girls who are trying it, at least the ones I saw trying it, they don't have dark circles or these like rings around their eyes. So of course they love them because they'd have nothing to cover up. But the Tower 28 one, oh no, you could really see my dark under eye circles. So I thought that was gonna happen with other hydrating concealers like the Say one, but no, the Say one covered them up pretty good. Hey, right here. Do you see that weird bump? You see this dry spot, right? Like it's a buildup of the concealer, but I've never seen all these little buildup of concealer slash dinosaur scales. I thought I was gonna fall so in love with this. See, that always happens. The Say one, I haven't heard anyone talking about, and I was like, oh, it's probably not gonna be that good. But then I see everyone talking about this, so I'm excited for this. But then of course when I get it, I get the opposite reaction, and that happens every single time. I really thought I was gonna love her and this was gonna be a meh, and it is the opposite. I freaking love her. She is a meh. She's a little bit worse than a meh. So I actually didn't set my Say Concealer in the last video. The next time I try her, I'm gonna try setting her and see if it makes it worse. And I wanna see if it shows my lines more or makes it more dry. I'm just using my Hourglass setting powder. Okay, I will say though, with the Calorie Concealer, again, bathroom mirror shows me what's actually going on. She is not getting deeply into those lines like a lot of my concealers do. I'm not sure if it's because of the setting powder. With setting powder, it's a hit or miss. Sometimes setting powder makes the lines worse. Sometimes it makes it look better. This concealer is not making it look worse, but is it worth the dinosaur scales? No. <laughs> Let's move on to bronzer, Too Faced Bronzing Stick. I used this in my last video. It wasn't a hit or a miss. It was okay. My problem with it was more, why is it $35? And the ColourPop Bronzing Stick is $10. And I even like the ColourPop bronzer more than this. I'm gonna put an even less amount because the amount I put on just kept spreading and spreading. And that's the opposite of what the Rare Beauty one does. The Rare Beauty one kind of stays in place. And when you blend her out, she doesn't like keep spreading everywhere. Like she stays right there. And the ColourPop, I feel like is in between. It spreads a little, but she stays in her place. But this girl, she just keeps going and going. So I feel like I have to put the tiniest bit with her. So I'm gonna show her on one side and the ColourPop on the other side. Let me draw her on first instead of doing my whole line this time. See, and I feel like she's just stuck there. So now I'm wondering what brush are people using with this? Cause I'm using my most dense, firmest brushes. Let me try my hourglass one since she's like really tough. Nope, that's not working. Okay, and why is she looking patchy today? She did not look patchy on my last video. Oh, she is looking even worse today. Oof, why is she patchy today? Did she not like that I didn't like her last time? So she's like, you know what? I'm not gonna work for you this time because you didn't like me. And I used the same foundation. Okay, well fine, if you don't wanna work for me today, then I really don't like you. <laughs> and just for fun, I wanna remember what the ColourPop one feels like because I do not remember her giving me a hard time. You can see that the ColourPop one looks more creamy than the Too Faced one. Probably why she can blend out better. See, look how easy she was to blend out. She's still there. It's not like she blended away, but she was just easier to blend out. I would personally recommend the ColourPop bronzer stick versus the $35 Too Faced one. 
Uh, so yeah, if you want a cheaper, more creamy, more blendable bronzer contour stick, then go with ColourPop. If I did not do my Rare Beauty powder blush video, then I would be using her today because I would have gotten her during the sale. But the blush I got in the sale was Give's new Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint in the shade Marigold. Take a wild guess what shade or color this is. Use fingertips and gently pat into skin for a radiant finish. So uh, let me go wash my hands if I'm gonna put this on with my fingers. Can okay, you know what? Let me try on the three brow products I got before I do the blush. So like I said, one box is a brow pencil and the other box is a brow i think it is a brow gel but yeah like why i haven't done this in a haul or unboxing in so long just because i'm scared like it could be flagged or something on youtube but i would always get my knife and be like don't forget to subscribe is this the pencil or is this the kofi okay you see that bam brow gel. So for the brow pencil, I got Kosas Brow Pop Nano. Susan Yara does mostly skincare videos on YouTube, but she's always raving and talking about this brow pencil. I remember her saying something like, I wish they sold this in a three pack because she uses it up so fast. And also probably because there's not a lot of product in this. Ooh, it's made in Korea. Oh, okay. It does actually look small compared to my other brow pencils. 0 0.03 grams. Okay, let me go see how much is in my brow whiz. My NYX micro brow is 0 0.09 and my brow whiz is 0 0.085. So NYX, the cheapest one, has the most product. 0 0.09 and this is 0 0.03. The NYX is three times the size of this. This, I want to say, is like $17, $18. This is obviously not $17, $18, and it's three times the amount of this. Like, how how good do you think you are? She's so tiny. See how tiny she is compared to the NYX? So um, I'm prepared to be wowed here. Okay, I have to put some pressure with my favorite one, the NYX one. I don't have to put as much pressure as I am with this. It's the same amount of pressure I have to use with my Brow Wiz. It's a brow pencil. I don't see why it's so expensive. I'm trying to figure out what small parts of my brows need this small of a size because I would not use this to fill in the brows because it would take forever to fill in the brows with how small this is. So the only part I see this being used in the brows is for the line here because that's kind of the only area I would want some detail. It's good. I like it, but not worth $17. If this was the same price as the NYX, even though it's three times smaller, I would buy it for that price. Let's say the NYX one is $10. I wouldn't mind buying this for the $10, but for $17, yeah, no, it's, it's for me personally, it's not worth it. Okay, the last two brow products we have are brow gels. These two I got since I just keep seeing everyone talking about it. This Colfi one, is $26, which again is way too expensive for a brow gel. And I think the Rare Beauty one is 17. Let's try this one on this eye just because I feel like this eyebrow is always easy for me to work with. Just so weird. And then I'll try Rare Beauty one on this side. I've seen so many people raving about it. And a lot of people say the same thing. They're like, you think it wouldn't be that good? It just looks like a typical boring brow gel, but it's so good. So I'm listening to the folks. I don't really have an opinion right now. I like it, nothing wrong with it. I like the feel of the brush going on my eyebrows. Now let's see what the hype is about with this Kofi one. Again, this is like $26. That's the most expensive I've ever seen for a brow gel, but it has this really fun brush. So I don't know how to use these. I think, don't, don't quote me. Cause people usually, I mean, I do too, but I'm guessing that's what this brush side is. You know, they usually mess up their brows first. You know, they kind of do all this, mess it up just to get all the hairs out of the way. And then after they do that, then they comb it nicely. So yeah, that's what I've been seeing. I never thought that I would want instructions on a brow gel. <laughs> this feels kind of weird how tiny it is. And plus my fingers hitting the brush while I'm undoing it. Not a fan of that. And ooh, shocker, it's working like a brow gel. I'm guessing what makes it expensive well i mean obviously one it's a smaller brand it's gonna be more expensive and two i'm guessing these add-ons make it more expensive i feel like that's a little bit too much for a brow product 26 i cannot judge her just yet because 
This is my first time using her. I have to figure her out. Those are the two brushes. You can see the Colfi ones, bigger and longer than the Rare Beauty one. There's more space in between the bristles. Okay, we're finally done with the brows. Now let's go in with our final product, the Give Fulgen Cheek Tint. Is she gonna be as pigmented as the Rare Beauty one where you need the smallest dot ever? Or is she gonna give you a little bit more room to work with? So let's pretend right now that she's the same as Rare Beauty. And I'm just gonna get the smallest dot ever. Let's tap it on. Okay, so she's not as crazy as Rare Beauty, thank god. Dude, that's why I never use the Rare Beauty one. It's way too much for my liking. Okay, let's see how that one goes. I feel like she could be a little bit more pigmented. Again, maybe because I'm so used to the blushes like Rare Beauty where you need the bare minimum. I would rather take the ones where you have to keep adding more versus needing to clean up a blush where you accidentally put too much. So I like her. She looks a little glowy. She looks natural with this amount right now. You can see that this side has blush. Looks very natural versus no blush. I kind of want to see what she looks like with my blush brush. I feel like with the brush, she's just staying in one spot. So maybe she is better with the fingers. Okay, maybe she's not the brush for her, my KBD number 25. So let me use my e.l.f. stipple brush. Okay, I put too much. So I do like that you can blend her out. There are a lot of liquid blushes where it doesn't matter how much you blend, it will not lighten up the amount. What's that word? It'll not diffuse it. Like it's just stuck there. So at least this one, I can lighten up the color. Like she blends away nicely. She's not stuck there, but I think she looks the best and looks the most natural with your fingers. I mean, I like her. She is not my favorite blush in the world, but she's nowhere near the worst blush. She's pretty much in the middle. I will say though, that I like how she blends out more than the Say blush. She just blends out smoother than the Say blush. I feel like since she's so light, since you kind of have to keep adding more if you want more pigment, that she looks very natural. First impressions, I like her. She's not exciting me as much as when I tried my KVD Good Apple blush for the first time and my LYS for the first time. This one excited me mostly because of the shade. And what's funny is I do not like these colors on my skin, but what really excited me and what I really loved was the formula. You would think I would love a blush based on how much I love the color, but as you can see, even though I don't like these colors, I really love this blush. And even though I like this shade, it's not giving me the same hype as those two blushes did. I can't really see that much of a glow or dew. The Rare Beauty one has more dew in it, the Honest Beauty blush has more dew in it. I feel like in the camera you can see the dew, but in person I can't, I can't really see the dew. First impressions, I'm kind of in the middle with her, but something about it is not exciting me. My lips are all moisturized now because I haven't been pressing my lips together this whole time. That dry patch that I had right here where I felt the need to like pull off is gone. If I leave the Tower 28 lip balm on top, like it magically disappears. I feel like this Sephora haul was all over the place. Let's just do a quick yes or no. Too Faced, Chocolate Soleil, Melting, Bronzing, and Sculpting Stick. No. Urban Decay Face Bond, uh, probably more like a hell no. Kosas Brow Jump, eh. Tower 28, yes. Say Concealer, yes. Dewey Plump, I'm in the middle. Kelly Ray concealer, no. Even though I wanted to give her a hell no, she's a no since she's not, hold on, let me let me check. Okay, um, she is not giving me cracks like crazy, so she'll be a no instead of a hell no. Kulfi, I do not understand the hype yet. I do not understand the price yet. I do not understand how to work these and take advantage of these brushes yet. But right now I'm kind of feeling a no. Her beauty, she's more towards a yes than a no. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry because I wanted to do this before the sale ended, but for some reason the brow products wanted to come last minute in uh, big boxes. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.